Peace, peace, family. How y'all doing? What's going on out there? Y'all see who I'm with? Y'all see? Y'all know what's about to go down. <laughs> the queen of media, Aww. Vicky Dillard. The Thank queen you. of media. Thank you. You put, you, you, put it, you put in your work. You definitely put in your work. And we need to give you your flowers right Aww. now. You know what I'm saying? So. Thank you. Keep, keep, keep so doing humble. what you're doing. Hey, let's. I, I want to get right into it. First of all, uh, uh, family, what's going on? Let me let me know if y'all can hear me. We're not going to be long tonight. We're not going to be long. So listen, uh, it'll probably be the same length as uh, the one I just did with Dr. Valentine. Probably about a half an hour, y'all. So the sisters go to talk, then we go to get a few Q and A. But um, share the link. Let everybody know that we live. All right. But okay, you can hear good. Well, okay, great. So the name of the show. The name of the show, important name, uh, the most the most uh, um, popular book in the world, the, the Holy Bible. Mm -hmm. We were taught it when we were young. A lot of us, when we got older and we got conscious, we threw it out mm. and we said, we don't want that Bible no more. Then we learned that there's actually there's science in it and that we was reading it, reading it wrong. So we picked it back up. Mm. Um, brothers like Bobby used to say, don't throw the baby. Bobby Hemme used to say, don't throw the baby out the bathwater mm. when it comes yeah. to the Bible. Come on. And um, I paid for your last workshop. It was magnificent. Me and my queen was watching it. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah, it was great. And one of the things you kept saying was that there's magic in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I uh, start, are we going to get right into it? Because I know we don't have long tonight. What do you mean by uh the bible's magical vicky because you 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 know how to work that bible, you work that bible. <laughs> yeah you work that bible oh man you work that bible but go ahead sis what do you mean by it's, it's magical Thank you so much for that. When I use the word, first of all, greetings to you, King. I bow to you. I'm so honored to be on your absolutely amazing mm -hmm. platform. And a shout out to the family that's in the digital building. But I want to say this is, you know, the essence of who I am, this whole notion, even the name of your channel, Black Magic. Um, when I use the word magic, I use the word magic interchangeably with the word spirit and the word energy. And um, I say that the Bible is a book of magic because I'm a student of spirituality. And so even though I was born and raised in a Mississippi church and New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church, and even though um, I explored different aspects of denominations within said religion, um, some folks don't even know that I was chrismated um, out of the Orthodox Church. And um, there's an interconnection with that being the Church of the East versus the Church of the West, which is considered to be the Catholic Church. And under the Orthodox Church, which Catholicism broke off of, the major difference between the two was that the Orthodox Church believes in a, a, a council of bishops, whereas the uh, the Catholic Church has a papal authority, which they believe in basically one uh, head to run the church. And so that was really the major split. Um, and then um, um, my once uh, formal connection with the Nation of Islam, that status is different, but I'm certainly a student always of Minister Farrakhan and just so many other things. I came to know that because I was doing, I was told uh, that it was irrelevant in certain places or it was not as important. When I began to really look at the book and after recognizing that there are certain elements that certainly have been tampered with, and we have certainly been given misinformation and mis the uh, misinterpretation of the text, particularly by our open enemy, I kept feeling vibrations from this book. And why I say that the Bible is a book of magic, by the way, it is electromagnetic book. And even when you look at the word magnetic, if you take out the net in the word magnetic, you have what? The word magic, right? Even mm, powerful, in the powerful even in the word magnetic. Mm -hmm. So just take out the word net and even the word net is useful because what does a net do? Hello, worldwide net, internet. What does a web, uh, what does a net do? It traps, right? But that's another story. So I called it a book of magic, not because first I read it and researched it, Brother Rich. Um, I started to observe the book. I was taught this book and it's stories by my, uh, mother and my maternal grandparents who raised us all in the same house. So we had to learn the book of books of the Bible back then. You know, we knew the Bible stories. We were part of Sunday school, BTU and all those kinds of other things. And so as I began to branch off in other spiritual systems, 
the relevancy of the book never left me because even when I dabbled in the other spiritual systems, I could still match certain parts of those other spiritual systems with concepts that I learned as a little girl from the Bible. Mm -hmm. The biggest reason I call it a book of magic is because <clears throat> the book that I was reading started to read me. Ooh. And what I mean by that is, is this sort of mirror effect. And I started to just copy the book. What do I mean? I was rejected from certain spiritual circles. I was willing to pay money, spend time for people to train me and to teach me about my supernatural self. I was in awe of people that could prophesy and who are aware of their spiritual gifts. And I wondered how did they do that? But they didn't want me a part of those groups. I was rejected over and over again. And before my mother moved uh, here with me after I first moved from Mississippi to the West, you know what my mother said? She said, perhaps God wants to teach you himself. So I began to just go in my bedroom and copy what Jesus said in the Bible. He would pray in his closet <laughs> or he would pray all night. Yeah. I would do three hour prayer watches, four hour prayer watches. I would get up at midnight and I would do intenses from midnight to six o'clock in the morning. Some days I would do 3 a.m. to 6, 6 a.m. to 9, 9 a.m. to 12, what I call watches. And so I started just doing something, just, just doing something. And then over time, I realized something started to happen. And I started to walk heavy and supernatural things began to take place. And so I stopped seeing the book as just 66 books. That's in Protestant churches. And of course, in, in, in Catholicism, in the Orthodox Church, they have additional books called the Apocrypha that's added to the book. I started to uh, test this thing. <clears throat> and I began to realize that when I was reading about David and Goliath, I wasn't reading about David and Goliath. I was reading about myself. What was my Goliath in my own life? Do you feel what I'm saying? What are my stones? that uh, my foolish weapons and tools that I have to knock down a giant in my life. When I was reading about Esther, I wasn't reading about Esther. I was reading myself, reading about myself and how I was dealing with the government at that time. You feel what I'm saying? Even when I was reading about Jesus, I wasn't reading about Jesus. I was reading about myself. So it's how I began to move. So the book I was reading started to read me. I was feeling vibrations, sensing vibrations. And then when I was not near the book, like when I was in the belly of the beast in the federal prison, what happens when you don't have the book? What happens when you don't have that book as a reference? How do we live? And how did our people live before this Bible, this book was put together? So I say that the Bible is a book of magic primarily because I'll say this quickly, John chapter one, in the beginning, it was a word. The word was with God and the word was God. Psalm uh, 40, and it's also quoted in the Hebrews, and the word became flesh, lo, I come in the volume of the book. So when I did my first ancestor webinar, the one you referred to in October, right, right, we talked about what uh, your um, ancestral messenger codes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when we think about this notion of what a gene is and what the DNA is, and I'm no scholar. You have all of the tech folks <laughs> our brothers that you have. They run circles around me. So I don't I, I, I know stuff I don't know. So I don't pretend to be in that. I do magic. I'm a little girl. I'm, I'm just I'm a silly little girl that just channels. You feel what I'm saying? I jump out there when the higher realms give me something. I just make a fool of myself and do it. So I don't <laughs> pretend to be that scientific. But what I do know about the DNA and the RNA. Is that our cells have instructions. <laughs> Why is that important? It's the book. Genesis, the book of Genesis or the book of genes. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. The genes, the DNA, this whole notion of instructions that we were born with, but we were told that it just has to do with our eye colors and the color of our hair and our height, right? Mm -hmm. But we were not told about the spiritual and the metaphysical vibration 
that we're born with. So lo, I come in the volume of the book. I am the book. Mm -hmm. And so the question then becomes, I say that the Bible is a book of magic because it's now a mirror. So when I peer into mirror, mirror on the wall, I peer into this book and I see me in every single circumstance and every name and every key and every principle and it continues to unfold. Powerful, powerful. Do you ever, um, what, what would you say, you know, if a Christian or somebody who views the Bible from a traditional sense called you a witch, would, would you be offended by that? Not at all. At one time I used to be because I was trained that way. Mm -hmm. Why won't I be offended if they were to call me a witch. Well, when we think about the word witch, the word witch, the first two letters, which is part of the prefix or the root, mm -hmm. comes from the word wise. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so mm -hmm. our open enemy demonized those that we call what now witches or wise women mm -hmm. because they exemplified and expressed a power or a capability that they themselves didn't have. And so to in order to restrict them, in order to stop folks from relying on their uh, 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 their energies and their power and their spiritual systems, we begin to demonize such individuals. So no, I wouldn't be offended by that at all. And it's interesting, Brother uh, Rich, I get mail and support from people that are part of all kinds of religious backgrounds. And that just lets me know that they are vibrating with me based on my vibration and my energy and not just merely a label. It's the essence. So not at all. Mm. You know, this quote on the screen, I heard you say this at your last um, webinar, Magical mm. Logic, and I was like, yo, that's powerful when you said that. That was real powerful because mm. we're, taught, we're taught the opposite, logic over everything. You know, so, um, but by the way, when is your next uh, webinar? W when is this next one you do? This Sunday, only a few days away. Only a few days away. Thank you so much for that. This Sunday, which is my mm. birthday, Brother Rich, mm. January 2nd, 2022. Oh, that's that's that a powerful day. The, that number 22 is 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 a um, high vibrational number. But it's this Sunday at 2 p.m. They can go straight to the website at onpurposewithvicky.com. And the emphasis this time is called Your Royal Bloodline Vault passcodes. There is a vault on the inside of you. But this time, uh, brother, we're going to be really focused on the drop of few gems, um, which of course I'm going to put it down with that and give them some insight related to your royal bloodline. And we're going to continue to break the cipher of what it really means in terms of our ancestors, which is a code word, by the way, for the energy in your bloodline. But we're going to go there, but we're going to begin to heal spiritually, metaphysically, your royal bloodline, and then unleash sacred secret Wealth codes. I'm not coming by myself this time. I got Ooh. a secret black metaphysician who's oh, going to give us some secrets. So I'm so excited. So this Sunday, just go to the website on purposewithvicky.com and get your seat <clears throat> today. Awesome. Awesome. I can't wait to see this one because I love the last one. Oh, uh, awesome. I, I want to, since we since we can't stay long today, family, yes. um, I want to get some questions from y'all. I want to get some questions from y'all before we get out of here. Uh, yeah, this is this is powerful, and I know she's gonna have a real powerful webinar this Sunday. So give yeah. me some questions, family. Give me some questions. Let me um say give a shout out to my brother. I see my brother in the chat while I wait for these questions. And even shout while out. we're waiting on the questions, can I just say a couple of things? Oh, go ahead. Oh, awesome. No yeah, shout out to my brother King Simon, one of the best hey. when it comes to numerology. Text him your full name and date of birth. And he will get back to you at his earliest convenience. All right, family. What, what would you go say, Vicky? Another reason I wanted to say very quickly, I wanted to speak to the uh, magic over logic. And another reason that the Bible is a uh, book of magic is because much of what we know as the Bible was stolen from ancient Kimmy. <laughs> mm, mm. So some of the reasons why the Bible still moves us in the ways that it does, even with the tampering and the misinterpretation of our open enemy, is because much of it came from Kemet in the first place or black ancient spiritual systems. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And so because those spiritual systems in Kemet, first of all, the Bible was never really meant to be written in the way that we know it. Um, and so it was always tradition that they passed down such knowledge orally. And I personally believe, I haven't read this anywhere, but I personally believe that's because they were transmitting vibration, you see, right. when they spoke it. 
And so I, uh, so that's one of the reasons I want to find. So this whole notion of the Trinity, even um, this whole notion of where the Ten Commandments even came from, even what Christ means, we see um, that these stories existed thousands of years. These concepts existed thousands of years, and Christendom stole such content, uh, 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 concepts, and they reworked them and renamed them. So that's another reason I want to keep in mind. Finally. To this notion of magic over logic, I was telling someone because in my course for many forever, we've been we always talk about being a mere mortal logic and magic. And so uh, an African lady I heard one time, she literally said it in that manner. And I started to scream and said, oh, my God, is she listening to my classes? Mm -hmm. But it's simplest equation. And what I mean by magic over logic, brother, is because even our quantum phys physicists teach us what everything we <clears throat> came from everything we can't see. Mm -hmm. So if everything you see came from everything you can't see, start at the unseen first. Start with the unseen so that way you can begin to reshape your reality, you see. You have greater agency and as a co-creator, greater power over your reality when you start to shape it, yes, at, 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 at the unseen place. And even this whole notion of word in the beginning was the word when we're thinking about uh, what the Greeks called uh, Egypt. But of course we know as Kemet, when our ancestors were using the word uh, word, it was, um, it was a metaphor really for harmony or vibration. Do you see? So when it was talking about, you know, the word, it has to do that that language was based on vibration. The comedic language was based on vibration. So not just literal, it had to do with an essence and with an energy. And so I think that that's the beauty um, of, of, you know, the word. And I begin to start to activate some of the instructions that were all, already on the inside of me. And so anyway, so that's what I wanted to say about Magic Over Logic. What questions do you have for me? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, let's get to, yeah, they, they got a couple of questions. So okay. Let's, uh, uh, let me see. Let me scroll up. Uh, do, you <clears throat> do you believe in Satan? Very good question. In one place, when we talk about Satan, when you really start to look at the etymology of that word and you look at the setup, this whole notion of court, got to get my curly braids, it's hard black to me, out my face real quick. When we look at this whole notion of Satan, yes, I do believe in Satan, but not in the traditional sense of what we believe that word to mean. Um, when we look at that word, whether in the Hebrew or the Greek, particularly the Greek, I want to say it has to do with a similar uh, pronunciation um, of diabolos or their thereabout. And when you begin to really look at it, it has to do with this whole notion of a court scene. And it's similar to the word that we use as prosecutor. So just like you have both sides in a litigation, one is the prosecution is one is the defense. We even see that in one part of scripture that causes the devil, the accuser of the brethren. So it's not just that. The other word Satan was used uh, when King David was talking about Satan. And when you study out the way he was using that, it just basically means an opposer. So I do believe that there are contrary forces, just like there are contrary forces when you try to take off on a plane. <laughs> but when you understand the laws of aerodynamics, when you understand universal laws, that doesn't stop you from flying, right? You just cooperate with the other things that are there and still get to where you're going. So because we're on a, on a planet with nearly now 8 billion people, that's people by spirits, people by competing intentions, you see, you're going to have some opposition and they're going to be what some folks call low vibrational toxic energies and so forth. But it is certainly not something that cannot be overcome. And I do believe that sometimes those energies are more pro uh, prominent in certain people on our planet, the newest people on our planet. <laughs> hmm. Wow. I mean, like I said, you know, this Bible, man, I, your, your breakdown is wow. Um, somebody wants to know, please advise on how to manifest with the book of Psalms? Mm, good question. It really is a good question. And in fact, I referred to the book of Psalms um, just a moment ago when I was talking, I believe it's Psalm chapter 40, if I haven't mistaken, where it specifically says there in the old 
Testament, and some would say of the old covenant, if you're part of the Messianic or Hebrew family, lo, I come in the volume of the book. I would suggest that you study um, the book <clears throat> of Psalms um, and study psalmetry. Look that up and study that particular science, beloved. Um, there are so many moving parts to the book of Psalms that it's impossible for me to go there. But if you're looking specifically in terms of manifestation with the book of Psalms, do that. I utilize the scriptures in multiple ways. I legislate with it. So in the same way, when I see a judge uh, pull uh, their their books when they're reading from a particular statue or they're quoting a particular code uh, in, a, in order to justify uh, certain rulings that they're about to make and they cite it, that's how I use not just the book of Psalms, but Bible period to manifest. And so because when I'm picking up a certain vibration about a particular text, just like in the movie, I'll say this quickly. Uh, what is it? Birth of a Nation. You remember Nate Turner's Birth of a Nation movie? In Birth of a Nation, do you remember that? Uh, Nate Turner's... Uh, 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 no, indeed, yeah, Birth yeah. Parker, yeah. Nate Parker's movie. Right, right. But it was about Nate Turner. And um, in the movie, and I love using this analogy, if you haven't seen it, please watch. In the movie, remember... Nate, Tur uh, Nate uh, uh, Turner, yes, Nat Turner, excuse me, Nat Turner was known as a, a preacher, right? A Christian preacher. And we know it wasn't unusual for the more learned uh, slaves to be used by the master to preach scripture, but he wanted them to preach scripture in order to keep the minds of the enslaved bound, right? So he wanted them to twist the way, twist uh, the interpretation of scripture to keep the people bound and to connect their captivity to the will of God. So if you believed it was God's will for you to be a good slave and slaves be obedient to your master, you would be a more willing slave. That was his belief in the movie early on, right? But something happened when he was quoting, in fact, one of the Psalms when he was saying, lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up. He was going there and he started talking about how um, he was using another quote in another psalm about warfare. But he only he started to twist his intention. He was still quoting the scripture. Right. But he was using and declaring and prophesying in code. He was getting ready now to destroy his enemy because they put his hands on this woman. And as soon as that incident happened with his woman, he no longer saw the Sadducees, the Pharisees. He no longer saw all the Philistines and all the people that we were told were enemies of God's chosen people. He no longer was re reading about a people from thousands of years ago. He started seeing his open enemy as what? The so-called Philistines. So he, the way he preached, he knew he was planning to attack his open enemy. So he immediately got a new revelation of the book he once read to keep his people bound. The moment they attacked his woman, he had a revelation and understood them to be the enemy. And so that's how I manifest with scripture. I find something that's principally having something to do with what I'm dealing with or something, what I'm going through. And I declare that I do all forms of what I call spiritual magic even though it's with a Bible or with the book, but not just the book of Psalms, but just in general, that's how I use the book. I legislate, which is why I'll do this and I'm almost finished. I have these everywhere. You see, mm. this, this came to me by revelation after I was in the secret place consistently for probably at that time, a couple of plus years, there were um, angels, in my room there, most angels don't have wings, but in this open vision I had, they had wings that were wing to wing in my room. And they had, I tell this story all the time, they had legal pads. So as I was talking and declaring, they were writing down. <laughs> and shortly after that is when I got the revelation that my word was a gavel and that I was actually legislating. I was holding court. And so when I hit this gavel, when you look up the word even hammer, the word, the, a hammer is a force amplifier. I said a hammer is a force amplifier and a hammer, and the word is likened to a hammer. What do you do with a hammer? A hammer is a tool. You build with a hammer. Is that right? And so that's how I use um, the word. So sometimes when I'm declaring, I'm holding court 
And I know because I'm a celebrity in the heavenlies, I know because my name is written in the heavenly realms and I'm recognized there, I know that my space is packed with divine energetic beings. So once I make a declaration that comes up in my spirit or through intuition, I hit it and I know that they're already at work to bring it to pass. That's how I use not just the book of Psalms, how I manifest is how I use the Bible, period. Shit, that's what you call knowing thyself. For you to get them <laughs> downloads, tapping. Yeah, because, you know, our spirit is constantly trying to talk to us, but we're not listening. Mm. So for you to come up with that, such a unique thing. And, it's, and it fits you and it fits your energy. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. That, that's a, that's a, a modern day example of when the Egyptians say know thyself. You really tap mm. in. That's good. Let's mm. get to how uh, we ain't got long. Let's get to a couple more questions. Okay. Uh, Brother Rich asks Vicky for me, how many gods are in the Bible? I don't, um, <clears throat> that's a good question. Psalm 82, it says that the big G, which God is not his official appellation. God means one with force and power. He says he's holding court and he is saying, ye are gods, children of the most high, but he tells his court of gods, little G's, force and power, that they're going to die like men. And so fast forward to what we call the New Testament, Jesus is being questioned by religious leaders and they are telling him he's being uppity and you're acting like God. And he references Psalm 82 and he says, does not your uh, 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 poets, that was one of the words, depending on what translation you read, but when you study out the etymology of the word, you find that's one of the words for prophets, poet. It's in that line of adjectives that describes the saying. Do they not say the saying, ye are God's children of the most high. So if God means one with force and power, I said, if God means one with force and power, Every quote unquote body that I read about, which is not about a body, it's about a principle and an energy. The names in scripture to me are about principles and not people. I embody those individuals. I'm Deborah, I'm, 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 I'm Jesus, I'm, I'm Paul, I'm, I'm, I'm all of these entities, I'm these individuals. So that is a question that's impossible to really ask because I treat God in terms of the term God as one with force and power. And we see such entities who begin to embody the word from the so-called Old Testament to the New Testament and through extra biblical text and not just extra biblical text, also through the Holy Quran, uh, the Book of the Dead and other sacred texts as well. So that's a question that's impossible to answer for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are we in revelation season? Absolutely. In the way that we've been told that Jesus is going to crack a sky and come uh, um, out of the sky in terms of what's um, known as, as the study of end times um, and those sorts of things. Absolutely not. This whole notion of are we in the season of revelation? Call me Vicky the Revelator. I'll never run out of knowledge. I'll never run out of insight. Because I'm divinely connected to the source. So we are, in terms of this notion of revelation, moving into greater levels of consciousness. And it's an ever increasing an ever revealing type of consciousness that's going to be filled with revelation. The revelation, by the way, the book of uh, the last book of the Bible that we called it is called the book of revelation, not revelations, even though most people say it with an S. It's literally, look it up in the Bible, it's literally one revelation. The book of revelation, it is a thing that is being revealed, but it's ever being revealed. And I believe that the time that we're in now is that we're re it's being revealed to us that it's within us. Mm. The revelation is about going inward. The revelation is like I just said, low I come in, low I come in the volume of the book, you see. It's about you and I now, beloved. It's about our unlimited powers. It's about that your royal bloodline vault passcodes, the stuff that's already in you and who and what you really are. That's the revelation season we're in. Not the scary stuff that they've told us. Is there difficulty? Yes. Will they continue to be difficulty? Yes. Do we see some examples that seem like that they match some of the traditional interpretations that we've been given? Yes. But it goes beyond that. There's something that's happening in the natural realm, but there are also realities on multiple other planes to which we're connected. And so it's not just one thing. It's not just that. 
um, but it's a revelation of who we are, the Christ in us. And as I've taught in my course from the book of Corinthians, Christ is not just a man, it's an embodiment of one, uh, it's the power and the wisdom of God. So that's what I believe the revelation season is really about. What, what's that link again to the webinar? Somebody write this down in the chat so I could uh, put it on the screen. What's the, uh, or, or Vicky, you can put it in the chat yourself, can you? Oh, oh you know what, let me pull it up. I'm not even on the page, let me go to it. It's um, www, I'll, I'll, I'm a, let me see if I can find it. www.unpurposewithvicky.com. www, let me go in the chat, let's see. Yes, I'm here. www.unpurposewithvicky.com. I'm fixing to hit sin. And family, that's this Sunday, January 2nd, 2 p.m. Eastern. We're going to specifically um, deal with, again, healing your royal bloodline metaphysically. And let me say this very quickly. Um, I've gone through a lot of hurt in my own life. I've had to forgive um, a lot of things, right? And so there are some things that I have a compassionate heart about, especially being around so many hurting people. Before I was even in prison, I used to teach in prisons. My program uh, many years ago, Jailhouse Rock Academy was approved by the state and I used to go into prisons and teach. And I've always had a heart for the up, uh, not just the up and out, but the down and out. I'm sorry, you said on purpose with Vicky dot that com? Dot no, com, on purpose. Com. Uh, they All spell right. purpose wrong. Yeah, yeah, let me, hold up. Yeah. I just got, cause my keyboard is a little- I weird. put it in the chat too. Can you all see me? Uh, um, can y'all see where I put it in there? Mm. Oh, the fan page is in here. I think the fan page got, has it in here. Where's Vicky Dillard fan page? Vicky Dillard fan page. If y'all are in here, please put the link. Awesome. Again, family, that's www. Not on purpose with Vicky.com. Yeah, even if you're not a mod, sis, just put the link though. Yeah, you, you don't have to be um yeah <clears throat> i got to my key my keyboard was uh, a little oh funny. yeah okay great he's got it on purpose with vicky.com thank you okay so um what i was gonna say is there's a lot of stuff that some of our people are going through um and even people that i was in relationships with and those kinds of things there's a lot of things that some of our folks are ashamed of that seems to run in our family um line right we want you to, I want to, the ugliest of the ugliest to come because that's what me and my brother, we're going to do a ritual concerning that. So if you know that there's something that's toxic, whether you want to call it curses or toxic karmic weights or what have you, this is for you. Some of you all are concerned about um, the global emergency is what I call it. Some of you are concerned about things that are being your children might get into because you feel like there's an agenda that's being pushed on your children you're concerned about. We're going to do that type of ritual, a protective ritual during this time. That's the reason why I'm saying this thing is about to be off the chain. Once I drop some gems, once me and my brother do that, then he's going to unleash some wealth codes. So black to me. So we call this your royal bloodline in the same way that the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church talk about this notion of apostolic succession. This notion of apostolic succession where they believe that there's an unbroken chain by the laying on of hands of power directly from Jesus Christ. This really is about the transmission of power, but I want you to know that there is a transmission of power that's already <clears throat> you. And this is what we want to heal. But if it's weighed down with all types of toxic debris and dust, you'll never have that thing activated. So that's what this is about. So this is for the up and out, the down and out, and everybody in between. Mm -hmm. If you have a family member, loved one, I don't care if they're in the belly of the beast, you can come stand in the gap because this is spiritual work, which means it's energetic work. So we believe in our long distance power. You can actually stand in the gap for someone that you want to have these things released upon. It's time for us to use our magic brother, uh, Rich, um, for the revolution. Indeed, let's get to one last question, family. I got for I have to get out of here. I wish I could be here a little longer, but I know a lot of y'all are gonna be there on Sunday. So uh, let's see. Uh Vicky Dillard, what is Kundalini really? Ooh, that's a really good one. Wow. 
uh, I don't even want to get into some of this, but this notion of Kundalini that's believed to be the life force energy that some say is, uh, makes its way from our spine all the way up right to our um, crown. And when those things are properly aligned between the proper balance of the masculine and feminine energy, you know, we're able to be in balanced. Um, this notion of Kundalini to me is the latter. This notion of Kundalini to me in part, because there are multiple revelations to this notion of what I call Jacob's ladder. The Bible talks about that, but also Jesus says that at some point you're going to see the angels of God ascend and descend. When you look at the way that our spinal cord is, um, it, it, it gives you this, 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 you can see some similarities to this notion of what this ladder is. This is sort of an esoteric teaching when it says that the angels of God were ascending and descending. So if this ladder is the steps or the means, it says at the top of it, when Jacob had the revelation, you have to read it in Genesis, uh, it says that God stood at the top. But isn't it interesting that the angels or the messengers were ascending and descending? They were going up and down. So this power, this energy was a portal and a gateway to the heavenlies and on earth. So I believe there's an interconnection that it has relates to our life force that's actually in us. So when we properly have what some of you are called chakras or other energy centers, there's really more than just seven. But if we're going to just use a typical number of seven, I believe that that has to do with the proper balance of our life force. But I also believe that there's a greater revelation in terms of how we uh, um, access um power and energy so i'll leave it at that for now so our brother dear brother can get him some rest <laughs> indeed uh leave your contact information one last time for the people before we get out of here absolutely again my website is www.onpurposewithvicky.com that's on purpose with vicky.com sunday january 2nd this sunday only a few days away get your seat your royal bloodline vault passcodes we're looking forward to sharing of uh, the passcodes with you so that you can live out your divinity it's already in you and again i'm not coming alone i want to come in alone I, I know that i can get you to certain places myself because miracles and signs and wonders follow my work but I want to take you to higher heights to a brother uh, who's a powerful black metaphysician who's going to release <clears> sacred, <throat> secret sounds that I believe that's going to unlock um, your cell power. One last thing, brother. Just like a farmer sows seeds one season, he expects there to be a harvest in another season. Yes. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the year, we're saying sow the seeds of success, prosperity, protection in the beginning of January. So that you can begin to experience 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold throughout the year of 2022. I'm dealing with people that's about this life for real, for real. I don't do tricks when you got magic. I have magic. And that's what I want for you. So these are people that's dedicated to the new spiritual work, um, to, to doing the spiritual work. And that's looking forward to getting results in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter and the fourth quarter. Not just for you, but also for your family, too. Thank you so much, Brother Rich, for this time. Indeed, indeed. Thank you for coming on. And it was such a, it was short, but it was, it was powerful, impactful. And um, I definitely appreciate your knowledge and wisdom that you share to not only the queens out there, but also the, the kings. And on that note, we're getting out of here, family. I will probably see you not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. But uh, take care, family. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Thank you all.